forget. And I'm just going to do a quick introduction for those of you who don't know Rebecca, which I can't imagine that you don't know her. But just in case, um, I, I did that the old Google machine and found um, her about page so that I could, you know, I mean, I know what I know about her, but I'm like, OK, what kind of the, the professional side of uh, the bio can I give and give you guys an insight into who Rebecca is? So Rebecca's been blogging for like a long time, since 2004, and she's actually been named um, by some of in recognized her blog specifically has been recognized as a top social media blog by um, social media examiner so she was a top 10 um, social media blog in 2015 as named by social media examiner um, she's also been um, um, let's see social media today steam fed 12 um, most and all top and all have listed her as the top 10 content marketers of 2014 which is an incredible honor I just say all that to say she has uh, amazing content and more specifically if you'll take a look at her content and you find her anywhere on social media the first thing the absolute first thing that is going to dry your eyeballs is her visual content outside of the fact she's gorgeous we wow. won't even talk about that but her visual content is amazing so if you guys don't know Rebecca and you haven't been to her website check her out at Rebecca Radish is it Radish or Radice I've heard Radice. it yeah Red yeah Radice. <laughs> okay so I wanted to make sure I got that correct. Okay, so literally she is a personal brand. She's got amazing, uh, beautiful visual content. So I'm excited to have her share my passion for visual content. And we want to share how you guys can create. Um, well, first, before we get to talking about creating it, why is visual content even important, Rebecca? Uh, huh. We could probably <laughs> use up the entire hour just to talk about that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it is amazing to me how visual content has evolved to where when we first started, uh, even back on Twitter or anywhere else, you, you never saw visual content. And that we've definitely become a visual society in that uh, it captures our attention. It grabs that eye. It, it really allows you, as you said, to brand yourself, uh, to allow your visuals to do the talking for you. And so many people are really doing their homework, as you said, Googling uh, you long before they ever reach out. And so let, let your visuals connect those dots for people. Let visuals really do the talking long before they ever reach out, long before they ever follow you on Twitter or connect with you on Blab allow people to get to know who you are through those visuals that are telling that story, are really going deeper, maybe giving people a little bit further insight into who you are. And Kim, I, I was just trying to think of some of the stats off the top of my head, but I believe it's over 63% of all social media now includes an image. Which right. Is yeah, it's just huge to me. It's unbelievable how far we've come in our evolution with with visual marketing. Absolutely agree. It's incredible. And I see that a lot of people are saying that we are frozen or um, the sound sound is coming mm. through beautifully for me, but you are frozen. So what I'm going to do is try to come in through my phone and see if that is going to give us a better connection. So give me just a second while I do that. And let's see if this is going, because we have, uh, look at all these amazing people, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's just almost, incredible. Almost 1,200 people, phenomenal. Okay, 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 okay. So, all right, we lost Kim. She'll hopefully be right back. Am I still frozen, everybody, or can you see me now? I'm just wondering if we're, okay. Oh, still frozen? Shoot. All right, still frozen, but you can hear me. Hmm. Well, as soon as Kim gets back, I'll pop out too and see if we can get all this fixed. So sorry about this. That's the fun of live video, right? <laughs> It's all of a sudden become live audio, unfortunately. Yes, definitely the fun about it. It makes it very real, right? You got to figure it out on the fly, figure out what's going on, fix your audio visual tech issues. 
Okay. Am I back? There we go. You are back. All right. We're going to try this through the phone and see if this will work better. So the quality of the picture is not quite as good, but, you know, we're just going to have to go with it. Whole lot better if we can see you at least somewhat and hear you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, lighting in, in the hotels is never spectacular. Um, but I think because we have so many people that that has, maybe we just broke it. I don't even know, right? <laughs> we broke lab. <laughs> we broke lab. <laughs> so we were talking about the importance of visual content and why it's so important. And, you know, um, I just to speak to some statistics, because you you quoted one thing. But what I find amazing is that we process visual content like 60,000 times faster than text, right? Is that not like incredible? So that's why, again, a lot of these, that's one of the reasons, look at us, we're on Blab, right? This is a bit visual median and people can hear us, see us, connect to us. Visual content of whatever the nature, whether it's video or whether it's, um, you know, Facebook tiles or tweets on, on Twitter, people are consuming that content much quicker because they can consume the content faster, they process it faster, and it just it just makes sense for them. So it's, it's one of those things that so many people are not stepping into. So as a, as a marketer, can you give some like specific tips, even about blog content? Like, for example, you're, you do such beautiful blog uh, graphics. Can you give some tips on how other people can do those and what elements do you include in those? It, yeah, well, it, so I guess starting from the beginning, it's really identifying your look and feel. So figuring out exactly how you're going to translate everything that you're about, everything that your traditional marketing has been, uh, taking a cue, obviously, from your website, your blog, all of your other branding and figuring out how you're going to incorporate that into your graphics for social media and then figuring out from there um, what what that message is going to look like. So what are you trying to impart? What are you trying to get across uh, with your graphics? It's so much fun to watch other people and see how differently we all use visual marketing. And there's so many different ways. You just touched on a bunch of them, Kim, in how we can use those graphics. And so I think it's figuring out, you know, what, how, how are you using visual marketing to extend the message of your company, of your brand? And so what are those gonna look like? And what kind of content have you already created that you might be able to repurpose into these visuals? So do you have, a blog post that's maybe evergreen in nature that you could pull out some tips or some how to's. Uh, do you have some quotes that you've shared maybe on a Twitter chat or maybe within that blog post? And are those quotes that you could brand with your picture, with uh, your name, with your Twitter handle, with your website? So just really start to think about how are those images going to represent you and how are they best going to tell your story? So how are you going to be able to elevate awareness through graphics and then also establish and really build that thought leadership that everybody is looking for within your industry or niche? Yes. And I, you know, one of the things uh, that I, I'm, Rebecca, you're frozen right now. So I'm hoping you unfreeze. You know, the funny part, have you, you remember that old saying, you know, that your, your mom, your mom's, uh, my mom always said it, you know, she would always say, say, well, I hope your face doesn't, don't make that face because I hope it doesn't freeze that way. That's like, it always seems to happen when you are on these live streaming apps, when you freeze, your the face you have or the expression you have on your face is like, ooh, that's just not cool. It's so, like Murphy's Law, right? That that's going to happen. <laughs> Am I still frozen? I can back yeah. out and try to come back. Yeah, you might want to just pop out and come back in. Goodness, I think we broke. <laughs> but one of the things I, while Rebecca's coming back in that I was going to say as it relates specifically to um, blog post you know one of my um that i share with people all the time is to make sure that your blog post 
title is in your graphic because when you share that to Pinterest or, or pin it on Pinterest, for example, there is a frame of reference for that blog, that graphic. Uh, um, if you are, if you write a blog post, for example, on yoga, you know, 10 ways to, to have better, better, I don't know, something, you know, and you have a running stream of water, which makes total sense in context of the actual blog post. But when you pin that uh, pin to Pinterest, for example, or, or share it anywhere, then there's no frame of reference for that um, for that particular graphic. So, you know, people don't know what they're going to get when they click on it. So always make sure that you have a uh, your title to your blog post in your graphics so that there's it follows. You know, people will follow that link because they know exactly what they're going to get. Don't you agree with that, Rebecca? Oh, completely agree. Yeah. And hopefully I'm unfrozen off of that horrific yes. face. I haven't seen it, but I can only imagine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, oh no, I completely agree because those are, uh, they're giving people just that, that reason to want to click through and, and check out that content. So it's yet another way to capture attention. As you said, you know, we are uh, just, there's so much information streaming past us at any given time. And we all have shiny object syndrome. You know, we're banging over here and over here and over here. And if your content, your visual content, doesn't just instantly grab somebody's attention, well, they've moved on and you've possibly lost that opportunity to ever capture them back. So yeah, I, I love it. your graphics do such a great job with that, Kim, in that I know uh, immediately what I'm gonna find on the other side of that graphic. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I know exactly what type of content I'm gonna find. And you've already told the story in not only your visual, but you do a great job in your context as well. So adding that context around it to really help me know, oh yeah, well, this is top 10 tips. You know, I've, I've got to go check this out right now. And it makes me stop dead in my tracks and click through, which obviously yeah. is the end goal. Well, and having those elements, like, you know, sometimes I, that's my, that's actually the first thing that I start with when, and I don't know what, how you do it, but that's the first thing I start with when I'm designing a, a graphic is I start with like, if I'm, if I'm talking about, you know, traffic, uh, for example, then I will go find something that's related to the concept of traffic from a graphic standpoint. You know, I'll go to deposit photos where I have an account and I'll try to, um, you know, leverage that, uh, that element to tie it into the story so that it, that graphic shares a part of the story um, to, again, attract people um, to the content and to the title so that they'll follow the graphic, if, if that's my intent, as it relates to blog content. Rebecca, are you still there? I, I see you've disappeared. Oh, I wonder why this keeps happening. You is can it, hear me? I mean, are you guys seeing Rebecca Seal, or is it is it just me? Okay, she's still there. Okay, good, hmm. good, good. Okay. All right. Good. You're, I, all I have for you is a black spot. So I'm like, oh, well, no. as long as you guys can see her, that's all I care about. So that's good. Yeah, I, I love I love your point about the elements because I think that's that's so critical that you really think through what is it that you're trying to get across so that there's harmony within uh, your content and with your visuals. Um, I see so many times that there's a total disconnect between the visual and the actual content. Um, and, and, and certainly a lot of that comes from uh, not taking that time to really think through uh, what is it that's gonna make somebody just immediately identify? What is it that is gonna connect with somebody and really resonate to where they say, oh yeah, I know exactly you know, what she means or what she's talking about, about your, your story you just told about your mom. Um, we can all relate to that. So it's thinking in those terms of how can you, how can you use your visuals? How can you use those elements uh, to get that point across a whole lot faster? Absolutely. And I just quick question, because again, I want this to be a, a, not only just us talking about visual content and how we do it, but the resources for people to be able to do, you know, some some of this on their own. So what are some good places for people to find the visual components like visual, like even if it's just graphics or if it's, um, you know, elements 
we t we're talking about visual elements, but when I, when I say that, not necessarily the tool, but where do they find, and sometimes the tool is, has the app, has the, the elements in it, but like, do you use like deposit photos or a stock photo place? Where would you recommend that people find, you know, some great graphics or some great design elements that aren't going to cost them an arm and a leg? Yeah, I, I do use deposit photos. I've used them for years. Um, Dollar Photo Club, I believe is it, is a great one. Um, yeah. Where if you don't have a big budget, which a lot of those can require that, you know, you pay a monthly $29, $59 dollar photo, uh, you, I think it's just $10 a month. And then each image is a dollar per. So it can be very, very uh, cost effective. There's another uh, free image site. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it off the top of my head, uh, but PhotoPin. PhotoPin.com has a lot of free elements. Um, so there's, and, and, and another one is Free Picks, uh, and it's FreePik.com that has tons of just vectors, icons, all kinds of elements that I use a lot for actually in, within um, the initial design stages. So maybe a PowerPoint, um, but just lots of great stuff and uh, all, all free on both of those. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, one that I've used um, that a lot of it's it's basically a PowerPoint um, element tool. That's what I think it was designed for. But I leverage it a lot for customized elements like um, and, and the name of the website is presentermedia.com. And I don't think a lot of people um, know about this little tool. So you can like create, like say for example, you want a um, an element that has a picture of somebody holding up a sign and you want your custom words on that sign. So you can customize the text and then click this little button and voila, out pops a graphic that you know has your specific message on it. So that's another one, good. and. Anna says she uses that all the time. I love that little resource because um, a lot of times, you know, I, again, I think it's mostly a, you know, it was designed as a PowerPoint uh, source for you, but it's got a great, a lot of great graphics. It's fairly cheap. I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, it's dirt cheap for what it does. So that might be something that you guys can use as well. Um, now, some tools out there. Let's talk about tools because everybody likes the tools yeah you know, what do we use to do all this stuff that we do well I, yeah <laughs> absolutely photoshop is my number one tool um every single day oh, i am in that you still are really yes love love like there is just I, I guess it's my comfort you know there's a comfort <laughs> level of knowing exactly where everything is and being able to get in and do some things rather quickly that I still to this day struggle with in Canva. Canva sometimes will freeze up on me. And so I yeah. just always seem to end up getting back in. But my my absolute favorite that I'm using daily is Relay That. And I see Craig is here. Uh, I absolutely love Relay That and what he is doing over there in that it's it's just so simple to jump in and do something like you were talking about where you could create a really quick graphic for Twitter or uh, he's got the social square, I think is what he calls them uh, in there for Facebook and for Instagram. So you've just written this new great post and you could quickly, I mean, literally within a couple of minutes, uh, put together a beautiful graphic. And I, I saw somebody uh, quickly say, just say no to stock. And that is definitely, I mean, if you know Kim and I, not what our brands are about at all and not what we're talking about here. We're, we're talking about using elements in a way that it adds to uh, the uniqueness of your brand, not in using stock photos to just slap something up. Um, and all of these tools, I think, really allow you to do that, you know, from Canva to Relay That. And there's so many other great ones out there that you can tweak things and make them so uniquely yours in just a, a matter of moments. Yes. Well, and I would just love it. I know I saw some people, Craig, if you'll pop in Relay That. And I, I don't know for sure, but if you have any kind of like a special, uh, you know, coupon code or 
anything like that, feel free to pop it in. Um, I have, you know, I have a design background. So for years I've used uh, Photoshop and when Canva came along, I was like, oh, wow. Now it doesn't do everything that Photoshop does specifically to your point, Rebecca, you're right. There is some things that it's still, you know, I have to go back to Photoshop for but on a day-to-day -day basis, we do use Canva a lot, you know, as a desktop, because right now everything we're sharing, guys, is, is uh, essentially desktop applications or, or platforms that you can use. Um, Canva is free for the most part. There is some, you, I would highly recommend that you do the work view um, or the work uh, pro or whatever it is now, um, just because of the ease of, you know, mass producing graphics for different um social platforms but i want to go back real quick to something that i think we should address rebecca and that is the use of free stock photos and i'm just going to give my opinion on it guys it's not that you can't use free stock photos as a as a component of your design process but the problem is this that lots of times when photographers are starting out they'll put their content and their their graphics i mean their their photos on free stock places to get some exposure for them and to start, you know, getting people to, to use and see their, their content. And then at a later point in time, they'll sell those to a content, a stock photo place. And once they do that, that stock photo place now owns the copyright to that graphic. So they can come after you. Getty Images is notorious for this. Um, so if you have used an a free stock photo somewhere, Please, um, you know, make sure that you are cognizant of where you got it. Don't just randomly start downloading a bunch of stuff someplace so that when, when Getty or any of the other, uh, you know, uh, iStock photos, if they ever do come after you and say, hey, you know, that's our, we own the copyright to that and you didn't pay for it, then you have a little legal recourse because you originally downloaded it when it was, when it was free. At least you have, a, you know, a little bit of a resource. Now, I'm not a... Um, I'm not an attorney, so I'm not giving you legal advice necessarily, but it's important to be cognizant of how you're using, where you're finding your graphics and where, how you're using them in the context of, of, of your brand, because it could, you could risk your entire business by using, you know, photos on Google, for example, when you go to the Google <laughs> machine and you, you go to those images, guys, those are not copyright free. Uh, unless you specifically search for copyright free graphics. So I just really want you to be cognizant of that because it can get, I've seen it really ding a lot of business owners when, you know, Getty Images will send, you know, a business owner a, a bill for thousands of dollars and a small business owner, that's a, a ding that they can't afford. So that's why for me, I am, I really try to make sure that I pay for my graphics. I don't, I don't, you know, try to use the free places. What about you, Rebecca? What do you think about that? I think it's worth the investment, as you said. Yeah. Um, your your visuals are that important. Um, as we're talking about here, they are just, they're, they're so much more than just that quick look that you see across social media. Um, it's, it's really, as I said earlier, telling the story of your brand and what's more important than investing in your business. And to me, this is just another one of those investments. And one of the best investments I ever made in my own brand was taking the time to really identify what, what my brand was gonna look like. And it's not easy. I understand why there is that push away from it. I understand why, um, especially for solopreneurs or entrepreneurs or small business owners, it can feel like, oh, you know, just one more thing I've got to worry about. But uh, that's why I say, you know, even dollar photo, uh, and I, I, I don't know the, if it's dollar photo or dollar photo club, but deposit photos, they're, they're incredibly uh, inexpensive when you look at a Shutterstock or maybe others, um, but such, it's such a great investment and one that you should definitely consider making because yeah, the flip side is exactly what you were talking about, Kim, which is all of a sudden out of the blue, you get a letter in the mail from Getty saying, oh, hey, you Googled that and you used it and you weren't authorized and we can see that you didn't pay for it. Now you're getting slapped with a gigantic fine. 
Um, so you really want to consider that too, in that what's the worst case scenario? It's pretty ugly and definitely not worth it. And one thing, somebody just made a comment, and I just really would like to um, kind of elaborate on that. Somebody said, just get out your camera. You know, guys, we don't have to go to uh, all these, all the, the jump through the hoops and pay for graphics if we can just literally take out our camera. I mean, we, we're constantly, we have our phones in our hands and on, in so many cases, in fact, we're getting ready to talk about um, apps in, in just a minute on how you can take, you know, content or photos even that you take um, through your phone and then put some, some text on them to create visual content, right? So, you know, so many times we make things difficult for ourselves as business owners because we don't slow down to think of the resources that we have at our fingertips. And m many of those resources are, lit I mean, one of those resources is literally our phone or our, our, our iPad where we can even treat, I mean, one of the things that is so, I did a, gr and there's mixed feelings on this. So I'm going to throw it out there and I'll just, I know I'm going to get some backlash, but I'm going to just throw it out there. But one of the things that um, I, I did not long ago, well, it's probably been six months ago or so, I talked about um, how you can use selfies from a marketing standpoint. And, you know, so a lot of the application for even the things that we do daily, we're always taking selfies or taking a snapshot of us with someone else or, you know, we're at a location where there's beautiful scenery and yet we don't take advantage of it. So, so those are all opportunities for us to create visual content that leverage, especially if we're a solo entrepreneur or the face of a company um, where we can, you know, pull in our own personalities and use our own images of ourselves in some way. Subi Zimmerman does this all the time. You know, she's amazing at creating, um, you know, it takes tons of selfies and then she uses that content. I've seen Shalene Johnson do this. I've started to do it. And it's amazing how much more engagement I'm getting on those graphics when there are ones that, you know, physically have me in them, which is never been something I would have thought of before. Now that doesn't work for everybody, but leverage those selfies, you know, if it makes sense for you guys to do so. So what do you think? What do you, do you see there is a, an opportunity for us to create our own um, graphic content? I mean, no, let me restate that. Our photos that we can leverage for graphic content. What do you think, Rebecca? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's so funny you bring this up. Um, and Tran and I were just having this exact conversation yesterday about uh, selfies and she, she started a conversation that kind of exploded where everybody definitely has their own opinion of, you know, are you going to follow somebody that's just sharing selfies all the time on social media? And do you want to follow somebody that's only sharing, um, that, that particular type of content? And my feeling is it really depends on your brand. Um, it depends on if you're the face of your brand, then you in various situations around your city, around your town, doing what you do, yeah, absolutely makes complete sense. Now for the majority of us as business owners, I think we find that happy medium. I think we find a way to incorporate all of that great content that we're out there snapping on a daily basis uh, right into everything else that we're creating. So we're talking about using tools like Canva or Relay that. And to me, it's finding a balance because I, I will start to feel like I've got too much pre-created content going out and I want to infuse my personality back into uh, yes. my social channels. So it's always a struggle. I don't know about you, Kim, but I'm always going through my stuff and saying, oh, whoa, a little too much Rebecca going on there. You know, usually happens when you're out in an event yeah. or something um, yeah. or too much pre-created content. And it's so, yeah, it's I think it's a constant uh, assessment of what you're putting out there, what's working, what's not, what's really resonating with people. Uh, and then figuring out how to how to keep that that social aspect, that fun personal aspect of you, in there with that content. I agree. I think it is a balance. And I, you know, for I mean, I get that some people are, you know, 
um, that's all the content they use. Like there's just pure selfie, selfie, selfie with, you know, sometimes a, something else thrown in. Um, for me though, I've, I'm exactly what you said. If I could just re repeat what you said, or I'll just go ditto and say, yeah, it is a balance though. And I felt the same way where, whereas I felt like I, I'm just always creating that kind of that canned content or felt like that was, even though it wasn't, it, it still had the same look and feel. And, you know, I'm like, okay, where do I, how do I in, infuse that with some freshness or, or more specifically with my personality? Cause you, you know, it's always like, well, is my makeup right? You know, is my not nose shiny? It's, you know, it's all those things that we worry about when we put ourselves out there. Is the per picture perfect or, but you know, that's none of that is how we really, I mean, we're not perfect in life. That's one of the, you know, honestly, that's one of the reasons that these live streaming things are so awesome is because we don't have to be perfect here. You know, we just show up as, as who we are. And yet so many times when we're creating that you know, selfie, we always feel like it has to be like, it, you know, it has to be perfect. Right. So, yes. um, I love that you said that because it is a struggle. The, what is it? What is that saying? Um, some, well, the struggle is real. No, it's not yes. a first world problem. Yes, right? Exactly. The it's struggle a is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. I know exactly what you mean. And I, I think for everybody, it is finding that balance within your business. And I think that goes back to your comfort level in what you're sharing too, because not everybody is comfortable in sharing maybe as much as uh, their personal lives as you and I do. I know you and I are very similar in how we use our social media, both from a personal perspective as well as for business. And we've, we've kind of meshed those two together in a way that not a lot of other people do. And I think that's because a lot of people feel as if they want to keep, you know, their their personal aspect out of their business. And that's that's totally OK. If, if, if that's the direction that you've gone with your business, I think it's just figuring out, you know, what what does that look like for you and what kind of content? Uh oh, I think we lost Kim again. What kind of content do you feel comfortable in sharing uh, for your business? Yeah, we get I, hopefully I'm back. You are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I noticed so, people were saying I was frozen again too. So I think that unfortunately <laughs> we've had some frozen issues we today. Like, right. It, I think we're just going to have to just hopefully as long as they can hear us. Well, let's talk about some specifics as it relates to, I mean, we've talked about why it's important. We've talked about some, some tools and we talked about the graphics and all of that stuff. But I mean, and, and I would just like to touch on a couple of things big things before we start bringing um, in people and, at, and letting them ask their own questions. But there's two sides, there, well, there's many sides. There's so many tools out there today for visual content. There's video tools. There is apps for our phone. Um, I have my favorite apps and I'd like to kind of s talk about apps real quick. And then some, some application as it relates to visual content and, and specifically how we take visual content from a strategy standpoint to a goal set. So how do you use visual content to drive traffic? So that's how I want to end up before we ask, start asking questions or at, at taking questions. But before we do, we talk about the actual, you know, how do we, we leverage it for a business end outside of just the basics of it. Can you share some of your favorite apps as it relates? And they can be video apps. They can be, you know, just straight up text apps, whatever, you know, whatever you want to share. My favorite editor, my favorite go-to is called Be Funky. I don't know if you use that one at all. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love that, that. Just that's, for, a, that's a web-based app too, right, Rebecca? You know, that I don't think I've ever used it um, online, to be honest with you. I've only ever used it on my phone. Yeah. I think there is a I think there is a web based tell me you got yes, that's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Um, nice. It's, it's pretty yeah, it's pretty cool. But so the neat, the neat part is a lot of, um, of these visual resources are not in both places, right? In other words, sometimes they're an app, but there's no web-based uh, platform for it or vice versa. There's a web-based platform and there's no phone app for it. Um, so when you find one that is in both, both places, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, I, I agree with that. And that's pretty cool. I had no idea. I, I don't think I've ever even looked for it online, but one way to use that with your own content would be to 
uh, maybe do your photo editing, uh, clean up that photo within Be Funky, and then pull it over into something like Word Swag, where you could put uh, you know, that context over it, you could put that quote over it, that tip, whatever it is that you want to want to add to that. Um, because I find I, I usually want to edit my pictures outside of something like a word swag where you're just adding uh, that text overlay on top of it. Another one of my favorites is over video, which does something very similar where you can take a video and actually put text over the video as well. And I know you you have a couple of different really cool video tools that you're using, um, Kim. And I've just had a lot of fun playing around with these. There's so many of them out there. So many. Uh, oh my gosh. And it's just test, yes. test, test and play around yeah. and figure out which one works best. Well, one of my new favorites is Legend, which is a kind of an animated mm -hmm. text mm -hmm. video producer for lack of, I don't even know if I said that right, but it's a, it's a way to take some graphics that have video or, or I'm sorry, text on them and turn them into an animated video. And, and just to take that just a step further, what I've been doing is, you know, creating um, three graphics that have text on them and then stringing those three graphics together in iMovie all on my phone within seconds, literally. And now I have what looks to be like a nine. So, so I'm creating a nine second video on um, for Instagram or Twitter um, with literally two apps. And that has been, and, and it's unique. It's something brand, you know, it's not your traditional, you know, just a straight up um, meme with some text on it, you know, uh, or some fancy text on it. Um, it's, it's just a little, it gives it an additional layer of, of uh, uniqueness. And it's not even just using legend as a standalone tool, although it's great as a standalone. But if you can create three graphics or even, I found that three is kind of the perfect um, kind of set because then you can create like that nine second window uh, for, a, or, or even 30 second, I'm sorry, 30 seconds for um, Instagram. And because every one of them is about nine seconds and, you know, there's a little give and take on either end, but you'll have about a 30 second um, video for Instagram or Twitter. And now you have a piece of content there that's that's uh, unique. It moves. It catches people's eyeballs. And, you know, it, it's been literally it takes less than five minutes to create content like that. So for those of you who are, you know, interested in doing some amazing things, that's a great little tool. Uh, Word Dream is another great one. Um, typography mm -hmm. is one of my favorites now, too, because of the fact that it has, it has a lot of the word swag elements in it, but it has um, the individual um, um, uh, social media templates in it. So, you know, if you need a, a Twitter um, sized graphic, for example, you can choose that template. You can't do that in Word Swag. No, so definitely do. not. That's a great tip. Yeah, I, so I love those. So, so I just wanted to throw those out there real quick um, and give you guys some application for how you could use them. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's, okay, all this pretty stuff. How does it drive business for us? I mean, we talked about how you create it. How does it, how does it make an impact? How does it drive traffic or how does it get more engagement or, you know, how does it drive sales? Let's just talk about maybe some components of all of that. Well, I, I think it all starts with really understanding what it is um, that, that drives people or consumers to buy. So I look at them as three different things. First of all, they're looking to satisfy a basic necessity. So maybe food, clothing, shelter uh, to solve a problem. So they're looking for a solution or maybe to better themselves. So, you know, one of your tips just now could be I want to I want to get better at creating those visuals that people actually will consume. So I think it's first of all, understanding what is it that motivates your audience? Why are they coming to you? What are they looking for? And then how can you provide that? in a way that it, it, it just it takes on a life of its own because, you know, it's, it's deeply impacted 
uh, and resonated with your audience. So once you figure that piece out and what they're looking to you for, um, then it's starting to test, 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 and uh, start to create those graphics in maybe an A-B test setting where you can monitor what's doing better, what's driving traffic. So much of this does come down to your data analysis, really paying attention to uh, what's happening with that particular graphic. So it goes well beyond just the mentions, you know, just the retweets. It's actually looking at, are people clicking through and using maybe Google Analytics in, in with your face in with Facebook and tying those two together. Uh, so it's really paying attention to what the data is telling you and telling you uh, what is it that is uh, causing people to take action. What is it that people are obviously highly engaged in? And we know that yes, engagement is a metric. And uh, you know, I, I know we talk a lot about vanity metrics, but it's definitely one that we pay attention to. And engagement can tell you a lot of different things. It can tell you exactly what that content is that your audience wants more of. And once you start to figure that out, it's it, it becomes pretty simple. And I, I, I see how um, it has evolved for probably both of us, Kim, over the years in that you have definitely, I, I mean, you have figured out without a shadow of a doubt what your audience is looking for and then how you set it up so that, yeah, it's unique content across every social network. It's got a little bit different uh, layout and design and maybe different context around it. But the goal is the same for all of it because you've identified um, why, it, why your audience is there, why they've connected with you, why they've followed you. And so all of that is really supporting your main goal, which could be to drive traffic to your website, could be to drive traffic to a landing page, maybe to a webinar, to a blab. Um, so again, back to understand what the motivation is, understand what your goals are, what you're looking to achieve, and then know how you're going to track and measure that and know what success looks like to you as well. Because yeah. I think a lot of times people jump into it and don't really know what success is going to look like to them. Yeah, I say that all the time. Social media is the only marketing medium that I've ever in my life seen um, that people don't go at it with a plan. You know, they just throw things at the wall and hope something sticks. And I mean, I started that way too, honest to goodness, is because we didn't know so much about it, right? But now that there's a lot of people educating around social media, there's still a disconnect, in my opinion, where people don't go at it with a with a plan, with a strategy. And a plan, in my opinion, says, okay, I want it something actionable from my efforts. And that's, again, for every social platform. And then you have to identify that, be very clear on what that is. If it's another, another, uh, you know, 100 people, uh, uh, I'm sorry, another 100 fans for your Facebook page in a specific, specific amount of time, and then how are you going to measure if you got that? You know, what's the strategy? Did that strategy work to get you those 100 fans? So, so many times we just you know throw stuff out there and we hope it works so even the same can be said for for visual content guys you have to figure out what is you know going back to uh, Rebecca's point exactly was what does your community want from you and you know for me I have content buckets that are varied you know different types of content that I share so that you know I not only engage with people on different levels but then I, you know, again, take that content. How do you take that content and drive action for your business? So it's not just about creating pretty stuff. You know, you can take, um, you know, it's, it's a engagement is absolutely an element. I mean, that's a, a critical element in fact, but you know, you can take be beautiful graphics and use them in your Facebook ads. You can drive traffic back to your website uh, on Pinterest, for example, by great, having great graphics. You can use SlideShare um, and turn your blog content into, you know, X, five ways to do X, you know, and use that slide share to drive traffic back to your website. So visual content should be an, a, 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 should be designed um, in large part with a goal set. You know, what do you want that piece of content to do for your business? In some cases, it's just pure engagement. In some cases, you're driving traffic to something else. In some cases, you know, you're, you're using it to sell. 
So it, it all has, it should all have a purpose. And, you know, that's the, the key to all of this across the board is, you know, define what that purpose is and then make sure you have a strategy or, or a, um, a goal behind that and then figure out what's the measuring stick for it. You know, what does that look like for your business? Yeah, so I love I love though. that you said purpose. I think yeah, I think you and I share that that common theme of if if you if it doesn't have a purpose, if it doesn't serve a purpose, it shouldn't happen. Um, and, yeah. and, and it's too often, yeah, where we're just you know you're out there, and I was the same exact way. Um, I, I'd be willing to bet the majority of us were where yeah, you didn't necessarily know what your purpose was, what your goal was, but you figured it out, and you've continued <laughs> to work that uh, over yes. over the years and improve and modify. Uh, and, and every day is learning something new and figuring it out and making it that much better. But yeah, if, if it doesn't serve a purpose in your business and there could be a day where I create what I think, you know, is just the most beautiful graphic. And then all of a sudden I realize, ah, oh, I'm not sure this is really serving the purpose I initially started out with. Well, then it, you got to make that tough decision of scrap it. If it's not serving yeah. a purpose, let it go. And we can't be so personally connected yeah. to our content that you can't make that decision. Yeah, and you know, just I, Rebecca touched on this earlier, and I do have the seat opened up, guys. If somebody wants to jump in and ask a question, but I wanted to just touch on something. You know, I see a lot of repurposing comments, and and so I just want to just pop this out there as an idea generator for you guys. We create a ton of content as marketers, I mean, you know, or small business owners or business owners across the board. You know, we know the value of content. What we don't know is the value of uh, saving time. <laughs> I mean, we hear it. We, we talk it. But the reality is that we are creating a ton of content every day that we should be multi-purpose in. You know, like this scope, for example. And I'll just use this this because we're here. Rebecca and I both have said things during the course of the scope. If we were smart marketers, and we are, we will go back and listen to this and either we could repurpose this whole scope. We could put it on YouTube. We could put it on our blog. We could have it transcribed. And, um, and now we have content that's a blog piece, uh, blog content or, or leverage both the YouTube video and the, the blog as a, as a resource for our, our, our blogs. And then we could actually uh, pull elements out, things that we've verbally said while we were on this scope and use those as, as visual content types you know, to where we have uh, an opportunity to create content from content that we've already created. And, and it would save us a ton mm -hmm. of time. That's such a great point. Yet, yeah. Again, I, we're are, always right, trying all, to reinvent the wheel instead yes. of just looking to what we already have. And Seriously. yes, it's taking one piece of content and getting the most mileage out of it, figuring out, yes. like you said, looking at it and saying, and, and, and what can I do with this right here could become 20 different pieces of content that you could use over time and really becomes evergreen content for the most part. You know, maybe some things uh, evolve and change but for the most part. Um, this is, you know, just think about all of that content you're out there creating every single day that's right there at your fingertips that you don't have to start all over again. Yes. So sorry about, yes, I just misspoke. This is not a scope. It's a blab. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl, I, I, welcome. Do you have a question? Oops. Do we have him? Do you see him, Rebecca? I don't. It says audio only, poor internet signal, so he might not might not All be right. there, unfortunately. Yeah, I know people have still been saying that I've been in and out as well, so it seems we just continued with our <laughs> audiovisual problems. Well, I, I think um, I, the good news is, I mean, well, I think that once I popped onto my phone, it seemed to solve that problem, but you're right, we've had frozen faces we've had you know the, the good news is uh for the most part we've had sound which is good so we yes. have phil is joining us phil well are we seeing phil no Anybody? i'm not seeing him or hearing him all right hmm 
Well, time to post a frozen face post. <laughs> Sandra, <laughs> that's funny. That's Sandra. She's a sweetie. Too funny. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah, here we go, Frank. Let's see if we can get Frank in here. Hi, how are you? Ah, success. Yay, you there we go. Hey, Frank. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Hi, Frank. Other than the fact that I'm, I just great. noticed. Just, uh, you know. just learning about Blab and trying to get up to speed quickly here. So I was interested in your title and wanted to learn, uh, you know, what, what you're talking about with the visual content. You, you're referring to videos or you're referring to, uh, like, your icons and, and cross-platform branding with, uh, you know, the, the same icon or something like that? We're talking about all of it. Anything visual. <laughs> I just came across yeah. a great book. Well, uh, I haven't read it yet, but uh, it's by one of my favorite uh, authors, Laura Reese, uh, called The Visual Hammer. Have you seen that book yet? No. Uh -uh. It's all about creating more, more about the icon that you use to really convey the message and have that drive the point home. So the back cover talks about, or, or I think I saw a blog post on it, it was um, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas. They had their, had their name and their logo set up, and then they added you know, what the, they're calling the visual hammer, which is they took the word cancer and put a, a red line through it. As in, you know, we're here to eliminate cancer. Yeah. And having that added step, it just gives so much more impact to the icon that you're using for the brand. Your sound has gotten really, yeah. really rough. Frank, yeah. unfortunately, I don't know if other people are having a tough time hearing him. Yeah, uh, I didn't. So. I, I'm sorry, Frank. I sorry, can you hear me now? Is this any better? I can move it right yeah. here. Ah, there you go. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Hey, Frank. So do you, do you, I'm sorry, we can probably hear you now if you want to finish up your. your oh, no, you're, you're, you're gone again, Frank. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, no. Frank, sorry about that. All right. Hello, Craig. How are hey, you? Hey, how are you doing today? Doing great. This was uh, definitely one I didn't want to miss, and I saw how many people subscribed to this. I made sure to promote it to everybody I could. So this is awesome. Well, I'm glad you're here. You're are you frozen to anybody but me? I'm like seeing a frozen. Yeah, yeah, Craig, you're frozen. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody's going to be frozen and or something's going to happen at some the point. Great, today. The great news is you have a really nice smile on your face. I've dodged the bad uh, freeze, I guess. I appreciate it. Yes, that. apparently. Yeah. You did. did. Did you? Well, one, congrats on your platform. You're doing amazing things. I'm hearing awesome stuff. Um, so congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Rebecca has been an, an awesome uh, champion and just inviting me in. And we had a great Blab the other day. Blab has been really great for me just to connect in a real way with people. And just, you know, I, it's really hard when you're working on something and you're throwing your passion into it to tell people about it without telling them about it, if that makes sense, like trying to not be promotional, but I am really excited. I've been working on this for about eight months. Um, we just added in a bunch of advertising and SEO. And I think the thing that I'm most excited about what you guys were saying is just asking yourself, why are you putting out graphics and what are the results and what is the purpose? Because I think a lot of people see what other people are doing and they're like, okay, now I've got to do that but they never say, okay, which platform is gonna be best for me? Where's my audience? You know, those type of questions are, are things that I've been asking myself a lot as a startup and small business owner over the years. Um, I had a question for you because I definitely didn't want this to be about Relay or anything. Um, not that I don't <laughs> appreciate the uh, promo, but um, one of the things that I've been challenged with and I think a lot of small businesses are challenged with is getting ahead of the content. When you, when you kind of say, okay, visual is important to me, it, every day that goes by, you know, people know that they want to be putting up two or three posts a day, and they know that that's important, but it takes a while to kind of build up that amount of content. So, you know, I've been kind of looking at an Excel spreadsheet, creating some sort of a pipeline that organizes all that together. And my really important question for me to you guys would be, 
How do you create your pipeline to get ahead of that content and keep ahead of that content so that it so that you're not thinking about what to post and it becomes more autopilot, very productive. Like I'm all about productivity and results with my graphics right now, even in the tool. So I was just wondering if you had a couple tips around that question. Well, I, I'll speak to my, for myself and I'm sure Rebecca probably has a, a schedule like this as well, but I, I basically identify what my content buckets are. What do, do my, my um, ideal customer, ideal client, what do they care about? What kind of content can I deliver that's impactful, that's value-based? And it's, it's a mix of content. And then I determine what those content buckets are and I categorize them. You know, if they're inspiration, if they're motivation, their humor, um, are they, you know, my blog content, um, you know, content that I write and produce for other websites, um, you know, any, whatever that looks like. And then I determine how many of those that I need in each category for, or each of those buckets for the week. And then I set about uh, creating that content because it's so much easier when you know, like I need five inspirational posts this week or whatever it is, or I need, you know, two uh, tip series or, you know, whatever. If you know in advance what you have to create instead of just sitting down there and being like, oh, what am I going to put out today? I know i got to create something, but what is it going to be? Mm -hmm. If you know and you're uh, prepared, it's like an editorial calendar for your visual content. Um, but you have to identify what that content looks like, and then you have to put a plan into place to, um, and time and time and resources is really what it boils down to. You know, how much time and resources do you have to, um, to, to commit to that, that project, you know? So that's how I do it. Re Rebecca, do you have a, a, another way that oh, well, very might add value yeah. Yeah, very similar. Um, I, it is in a content calendar. So looking ahead, at, you've got to figure out, first of all, what do you have coming up? So do you have an event, a presentation? Do you have uh, a webinar, something that you need to be promoting around everything else that you're going to be creating. So I love the way you said that, Kim, in your content buckets. Uh, figure out, first of all, what, what are your top maybe three, four types of content that you're sharing, and then work around all of the other events that are coming up. And for me, it's always looking 30, 60, 90 days ahead um, because so much of the content uh, is is campaign based as well? Um, what campaigns do we have going on that uh, I've I've got to support or promote? And what you don't want to have happen is a situation where there's just massive confusion because you're overexposed in all of the content that you're putting out there. And what I mean by that is if you don't have something similar to what Kim's saying, a calendar, either it could be an Excel spreadsheet, um, it could be in a smart sheet, which is something that I use, um, a really great online tool that you can use with a team. Um, okay. If you don't capture it somewhere, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really easy for you or your team member to start just scheduling stuff out all over the place. And pretty soon you have, you know, your webinar overlapping with your blab, overlapping with a Twitter chat that you're going to be on, overlapping, overlapping. And so you want to make sure that you're evenly spaced out, that you're spacing out that content in a way that feels very natural, very conversational. Um, doesn't feel forced like you're just pushing a whole bunch of content out there. And that's where the purpose really comes in is sitting down from a, a very high level. So 10,000 foot level uh, looking at, OK, what are we trying to get across? What are our goals? We got these four goals, you know, and they fit into these buckets, like Kim said. And now we're going to break that down, bring it down to ground level of what does that look like every single day and maybe. It's I want to post one motivational, I want to post one selfie, and I want to post one graphic that has to do with an evergreen blog post. And so you're going to break that down into your sheet and then determine, OK, when, you know, from there, when best times to post everything else that you're looking at. But get yourself on a schedule. And if nothing else, get it in your calendar. Or as I always say, you know, what doesn't get written down doesn't get done. 
And it's the same way with posting your content. Just get it somewhere that it's comfortable for you. It could be a Google Calendar, whatever the case. Just make sure that you've got it written down and that you know exactly where you're heading every single day so there isn't that hit or miss strategy like Kim was talking about. That's, that's awesome. And are you kind of collecting those final images in a Dropbox for a team to post? Or, yep. or what's yep. the final right stage for you guys? Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Great. Yeah, we use HubSpot as well. Um, so it's a HubSpot file manager, but also within Dropbox. And I, I noticed a lot of the scheduling tools will kind of post for you. Um, do, do you lean one way or another of whether or not you want that scheduling to, tool to say that it's posting for you? Um, you know, like when it tags it or anything like that? Or are you, are you trying to, I guess my other question is, do you try and post on all platforms at once? Or, or do you like natively pick where where this this content would be great for this platform? Yeah, yeah, most okay. definitely. And I, I, I know Kim definitely has an opinion on this because she does such a great job um, at managing that. But I, I would say absolutely not. You do not want to post the same thing to every single social network all at the same time. Gotcha. Um, there could be a scenario where uh, you know, it's five minutes until we go live on Blab. Come join us. Um, you know, where you're you're kind of posting that everywhere to just notify last minute. But for the most part, you want to create content that's unique and specific to that social network. Um, so, which is obviously what you're helping everybody do uh, in creating a graphic that's specific to the format. Uh, and layout of Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. And it looks like we lost Kim and Craig. But yeah, I, I, I know, not putting words in Kim's mouth, but she definitely is an expert at making sure that it, 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 it's evenly spaced out. Doesn't mean that you're not sharing similar content, you know, going back to talking about campaigns or a promotional piece. Of course, you're going to share that probably across multiple different social networks, just not at the same time um, and not with the same languaging. You want to change up that context, that verbiage that you're putting around all of that content too. And that that uh, speaks to the, the different audience, the different nature of that.